Hello, let's talk soldering irons. A quick reminisce, if you will. I started out with a big old thing like this, which was main control, took about 10, 15 minutes to heat up, had this dial that said it was a temperature or not, but it didn't really work very well. Um, uh, tips are interchangeable, but this one kept falling out. Not very good. Then along came this one called the TS100, very much the iron du jour for a while, especially for us FPVs for fixing stuff and soldering, uh, very portable heats up very, very quickly. This was working fine for me uh, until the screen went. The little OLED screen no longer says what's happening, which it became a bit useless. And around that time, I was contacted by a company called Secure, I think that's the way you pronounce it, who also made a soldering iron, which was this little guy. And I reviewed it for my channel. It was very good. It was very similar to the TS100, except it didn't break and it worked fine. Now, this has been going since, and you can see this tip has uh, seen better days because I've used it so much. Very impressive, you can, you can use it from a little barrel plug, you can uh, update your settings using the, the little buttons. Uh, it heats up very quickly, a uh, range of tips available, all good. And they contacted me recently, so they got a new iron called the S99, would like to check it out, and I said, absolutely. I've got it in this little box because I opted for the one called the kit. But I should talk about the affordability of this thing. If you buy this soldering iron with just a tip, it at the moment is $27.50 from a website, which is super, super cheap. Uh, very impressive. I got the kit. The kit has a bit all singing and all dancing, where it's got uh, multiple tips, uh, a USB wall plug, some solder, a little soldering set. Let's go to close up. Let's introduce you to what we get there and we can run through the iron and what's that like. And there's some differences as well about how the tips interchange. So that'll be interesting to check out. To close up. Okay, welcome to close up mode. As I said, I've got the kit and I'll tell you the differences between the various options you can get, which is pretty basic saying um, what the actual basic kit is. Because here we have the little iron itself, hard to focus on. And you see, we've got uh, two buttons here the A and B buttons, and quite a different way of uh, connecting things. But basically, if you just get the iron itself, you will get an iron and a tip of your choosing. Here's one of the tips, and the way they insert is literally shove them in like that, uh, which makes for an easier time. Previously, if we look at the previous one, we would have had to just loosen up these uh, screws here with an allen key then take that out get the new one put it in do these back up again and we're good to go so it's been made simpler of course it's still not a quick uh, super quick thing to do because although it's much easier to do that get a new one and put it back in you do have to wait for these to cool down else you're going to get quite an ouchy on your fingers if you do that so just be aware of that but that's that's the basic kit uh, a tip of your choosing not necessarily this one and the iron itself so all this extra stuff is extras in the kit and you can get the kit with a single um, tip or as I've got all the tips different tips for different jobs here we'll go through those in a sec um, we also get because this is the UK slash US one it's here with this UK adapter uh, and this is one of the cool things about it. What we've got here is this little PDB adapter. And you see, if you want US, you just plug it in like that. If you want UK, it's like that. And so we've got a PD uh, port there. So this will do 65 watts from the wall. And to go with that, we've got this little USB-C to USB-C. Because, of course, in the back of this, you have got a USB-C input for power. But we've also got, if you're in the field doing something, this XT60 to USB-C power. And this will take a 2 to 5S LiPo, I think it said in the instructions. So no 6S, but um, 5S or even 4S will heat up the iron pretty quickly. And I used to run this from like a charger in desktop power mode, but I'm pretty pleased the fact that I can run it direct from a wall plug now just with that USB thing. We've got some stickers. We've got this little QR code that links to the manual, which interesting, I couldn't find linked off the website, so worth having. Uh, what it does uh, above what the, the website does is just tell you all the different parameters you can change things. And because it's sort of a starter kit, we've got a bit of uh, lead-free solder, and we've got one of these little stands that you can rest your eye on and 
get the sponge wet for just dabbing it and uh, getting rid of any little bits and pieces on there. So that's the kit. Let's uh, see what we get in terms of different tips now. Now I can't remember the names of these but I'll, I'll flash them up on the screen now and they're on the website. You've got this kind of 45 degree chisel type thing. Looks like you can get a, a lot of heat for it. Pretty good for doing big wires and big connections like that. You've got this one. Where I'd, I'd call this kind of middle of the road tip. Uh, decent sized wires, decent sized contacts. There's, there's a nice uh, big bit there that's going to get a lot of heat through it for uh, doing semi big jobs. And then it gets a bit smaller with this one. This looks much better for doing things on like flight controllers and that just when you're just dabbing down and connecting those uh, wires onto pads and stuff. And for your really fine work you've got this guy here somewhat of a needle this one. This this is possibly a little bit too small for generally for the jobs I do but it's it's very good for getting in there and of course it's not necessarily on the tip it's you could sort of just stroke it on the side there. Uh, I find that if I'm not careful I can be a bit <laughs> a bit shaky hands and, and do a lot of damage if I'm not careful. So sometimes a very fine tip like that is very good for me. But probably uh, my middle of the road one is be something like this for doing the general flight controller stuff. So let's, let's pop this on as this is super easy to do. In and ready to go. Uh, and let's power this guy up and have a look at the menus. Now you notice it comes up with a version there and you can connect this to a computer and upgrade the software should you want to. It's got uh, different firmware versions. I haven't checked if that's on the latest. Um, I thought I'd just check what's here. Nice bright OLED screen. You can see what's happening. We've got the current temperature of the iron there. We've got our input voltage and 300 degrees C is our active voltage and it, it tells us um, it's on power there and I think B hold down and we can go through the various menu items there. B moves you around, A goes into it, no it doesn't. Long press to B and that's when we got the working temperature. Temp step, temp units, temp shield, a buzzer, start heat is off. So long press and we can get the work temp up to about 400, which is what I'd normally do. Let's do that for starters. There is a manual which actually tells you the buttons. I was kind of working it out as I go here. Perhaps not the best way of doing it, but... Oh, I see. After a while, it's just like, oh, that's you done, is it? I see. You leave it long enough, it just returns. So, idle-wise it's set to sleep after six seconds and that means if it doesn't get any movement it'll start uh, powering down and, and by that I mean it just turns off the heating element. Screen open, yep, all makes pretty good sense. The OLED, brightness 50, direction, yep, uh, it's available in English, Chinese and Russian apparently. Power Auto, Predigo Auto, kind of makes sense. Power Vault, nothing. Yeah. Save for about, don't need to calibrate it. Yeah, cool. Alright, so it sounds like we should turn it on and see how quickly it's going to heat up to 400 degrees C. We've got a stand to put it on. Why don't we just get this wet quickly? So we've got some of the solder they gave us. Let's see how quickly this is going to go. So, 200, 300, 400 degrees. That was, what, about five seconds? I can't see through the viewfinder, but yeah, as you can see, that's... Um, if it's going to focus, that's having absolutely no problems melting that. Should also be mentioned that when the iron is on, if it's going to focus, there we go, we can use the buttons 
to increase or decrease in steps of 50 and you could see um, how those steps could be uh, changed in the settings there so if we go back to 400 up it goes again very simple so if we turn off I've selected stop I think yeah and it's starting to cool down quite how long it takes to cool down I mean it says this thing is particularly useful for helping disperse temperature but of course it's up to 400 degrees is the tip clean let's just that's, that's going to help uh, cool it down. But this is, uh, ooh, come on, focus. It cools pretty quickly. It's, it's going to take a, a good few minutes to get down all the way. You wouldn't want to change the tip when it's like 200 and something degrees, put it that way. So although it's a nice, easy, quick change tip, give it a chance just to cool down and stuff and uh, you'll have a much nicer day. So my only vague complaint so far is the fact that the the enclosed USB-C lead is about one meter long, which is a little bit short. Um, it's fine if you've got your uh, power supply near you, but mine is generally sort of in an extension cable so I can do it on my desk and stuff. So I might just have to fiddle about with how to do that. Or of course I could just use my desktop power supply and use the XT60 adapter. So that's, the choices are yours, of course. So let's do a bit of test soldering. I've just got here uh, a couple of bits I found. I got this piece of wire. This was attached to a Dean's connector. So I thought, I know what to do. I'll tin these and then I'll try and connect it to this old flight controller. We've got a couple of terminals here that we can uh, tin and then solder onto. And it's really just to test it out. Um, I've got a, a couple of extra things here to make my life easier. And I can't speak with any real authority on soldering. I'm I'm not brilliant at it, I can get by. And that's the good thing about soldering for sort of drones. You don't need to be an expert and it's pretty easy to practice. If you grab yourself some pieces of wire, some pieces to do practice boards, if you've got any old circuit boards that are dead, you can practice soldering and desoldering onto those, just joining wires, stuff like that. Get the hang of it before you actually attack something in real life. Basically make sure you can get in there without uh, hitting anything else. The reason I have things like helping hands uh, and also, for me where I'm both short-sighted and old so my short-sighted vision is that, that if I had to try and use this I'd either have to go way back or I'd have to take my glasses off and go this far forward is is not useful so I use this lovely thing to magnify stuff and also give me some good lighting if if there's anything I can give you a tip for and what works for me is sometimes you see people and they're sort of they're soldering and they're going around angles and they're holding things awkwardly the only way I can do things steadily is have something in front of me in the position I can put my elbow down if I want to I can be very still I can hold things I, I, I make it work so I, I get the things facing me the way I want to I don't I don't try and go around the back of things like that and do awkward things that really works for me um, if, if you're having trouble, I would suggest you, you look at your workspace and see how it's working. So I'm going to try and zoom in on this stuff. Um, last time I tried this, uh, oh, I forgot, I've, I've got this as well. This is a, a little piece of sort of wire wall and that helps you uh, clean off your solder tip. These little things are, are pretty good for cleaning up the tip, but if you've got things that are stuck on there, these things work really well for, for getting stuff off. Yes, I'm going to try and zoom in. So I can show you what I'm doing in tinning terms. Last time I tried this, all I managed to do is get a close-up at the back of my head though, so I'll give you fair warning that. We've got the soldering iron, I've got the plug right here in front of me, because as I said, the lead is is not brilliant. I'd actually have it round the other side, so I wouldn't have to cross over the lead. Uh, sort of a future note for myself there to sort out. But anyway, let's, let's try and get going and, and see what I can film or not film. If this suddenly cuts to me afterwards, it means it filmed the back of my head. The only other thing I would normally do is have my fan running, which would take some of the smoke out, but then you wouldn't hear me, so that's not as good. Anyway, I'm just going to tin up these wires for starters. Quite thick wires, these ones, actually. Much too uh, thick for the job I'm doing. But that's those two done, which isn't going to focus. Hopefully, this flight controller is a little bit bigger. Well, I thought I cracked the angle, but I didn't realize I put my other hands there 
to hold things still. You'll notice uh, me leaning against things. That I'm, I'm using all sorts of my little techniques to try and keep myself absolutely still and not shaking with uh, other ways and means, which seems to work. I've just tinned up the pads there and now I'm just putting a little bit of solder on to put the pre-tinned wires on that I just did earlier. It's all pretty simple stuff, but pretty typical of what we would do. And uh, it's pretty easy with this iron because it's, it's very light and easy to move around. And I think the tip's just about perfect size for this sort of thing. Anyway, I have done. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Okay, that was just a little test, but yeah, the iron feels absolutely fine. Great, um, very easy to do. Uh, the work, all I did was, it's gonna focus. I just soldered a couple of wires and tinned them to there, and that, that seemed to work absolutely fine. Nice and easy to use, it's just cooling down. That, that, this is a, this is a nice tip actually. This is a good multi-purpose tip for the sort of things we do as, as drone people. That's kind of it. It's a soldering iron, it works brilliantly well, um, and it's really affordable. So it's it's hugely recommended. If you're just starting out, if if you're getting into this hobby and you have to think, do I need to learn how to solder? The answer is yes. If you're gonna break stuff, if you're gonna upgrade stuff, if you're gonna crash stuff, you do need to learn how to solder. But as I said, get some pieces of wire, get some practice boards. Um, it is pretty easy. It's it's weird at the start, and then once you get it, it's, it's pretty easy to do the basics. Anyway, I can't really say too much more about this because it just kind of works and does the job. Um, so let's go to some conclusions. Well, I know this is a pretty short video, guys, but I don't know what else to say about this other than it's an extremely keenly priced soldering iron, which really does work. Um, if you're out in the field and you're breaking your drone to at a race or something like that, just plug in a uh, two to five S battery and it turns on and you can get soldering with like under 10 seconds. Despite the fact you've got to wait for these things to cool down, it's so easy to change the tip over, it's ridiculous. And that sort of thing means that if you want to just put it back in the case, should you have bought the kit, it's very easy just to get everything back inside and then get it out for next time. Because there's no reason to sort of get an Allen key and, and do stuff. It's just like, click, plug in, go, and you're off and soldering. Really, really good. <laughs> It's a really good soldering iron, it, and it's a really good kit. But yeah, if if you if, if you don't need the kit bits and you just want the soldering iron, it is very keenly priced. I'm going to say that again. I don't like to use the word cheap because that that conjures like like cheap and nasty. But it, yeah, it's it's very inexpensive. I have to really recommend this, especially if you haven't got an iron and if you haven't got one of these smart irons. Uh, this this is really good. Uh, simple as that. Really good. Um, yeah, I haven't gone much into detail because there's, there's not that much to go into. There's all sorts of parameters you can use to change the heat settings and the sleep settings and that sort of thing and the language, but that's all covered in the docs. And anybody that's seen a similar sort of eyes would be used to it. Yeah, so the, the, the new features are, tip comes out very easily, uh, powered USB with a PD adapter. That's really good because it, you, you lose the, the hassle of having to either have a LiPo or something like a LiPo charger with, that can do like desktop power. You've just got a USB lead. Of course, if you've already got a USB lead and a PD adapter, maybe you got from a laptop, brilliant. Just plug it straight in and you're, you're good to go. What could be easier? Yeah, I'm gushing now, aren't I? Anyway, yeah, this has been the Secure S99 soldering iron. This is just the soldering iron, as mentioned. This is the kit and it was kindly supplied for Secure for review. So thanks very much to them. And of course you can find links down below if you want to check it out in more detail. Hope that review has been helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.